Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Brigadier Ali Hanzab, Director of Telecommunication, Minister of Interior, Qatar. We are a user, and we expect a lot from the industry. And we'd like to show you what is our mission and what we are doing. We act as a service provider for uh, Ministry of Interior for public and safety. Our uh, users is the police, Qatar Armed Force, Amiri Guard, and uh, medical, emergency medical services, and many others who is dealing in public and safety. We have MBLA system, IBT, and uh, Tata Radio, uh, CCTV uh, camera, surveillance camera, and the latest project we had is we launched the first LTE in Middle East. And uh, it is now in operation in the first phase, and the uh, decision for us to uh, do this is we are very happy with Tatra, but does not really satisfy our requirement, especially in uh, and data. This is the, our users. We use also uh, some uh, services offering like AVL and uh, many applications. How we see the road ahead. This is one of the main reasons that we decide for LTE. We used Tetra for the last seven, eight years. Uh, it is doing the job that we really need. But the only drawback is in the data and uh, especially the video streaming. You know, we, for public or commercial network, we used it as a backup sometime, but in many cases, does not really fill, fulfill our requirement. And this is one of the main reasons that we decide as to work as a, a service provider for security agencies. Our expectation from vendors is actually to fulfill our needs because one of the main problems that we see that uh, most manufacturers, they uh, design the network for, especially for uh, commercial networks, not for public and safety. Everybody knows that public very few company who's now starting to listen to our voice. So this is one of the main uh, issue that we, fa we faced. This is show how, show how complex our network. We are, uh, we designed our network that we have our own fiber optics. We established DWDM technology. Uh, we have three rings, one is for the core system, one is for the distribution, and the third ring is for users. Our main job is to provide all the services to any policeman, because uh, anywhere the, uh, within the office, in the street, in any location. He can have the voice, the data, the video streaming, anywhere he needs it, without any geographical barrier. You know, I don't want to repeat myself. It's, we're very happy with, with uh, Tatra. We expect a lot more from LTE. We are now uh, maybe one of the first users in the Middle East. Uh, Frankly, 
it is better than our expectation. Now it's an operational, maybe it's not countrywide uh, coverage, but big part of the country, and uh, we are uh, extremely happy, and we expect uh, more Im improvement. Thank you, gentlemen. Good morning to you. Yeah, my, my name's Nick Coiser. I'm from Port Talafai. Tara, Tara gave the introduction already. So uh, what I'd like to do is start off by saying a few brief words about Port Talafai. For those of you who are not already familiar with us, Port Talafai is a Helsinki headquartered company specializing in the field of uh, mobile data applications and mobile data in general with the goal of empowering field users and control room operators and providing mission critical information to those users who really need it in public safety, in security and in other markets as well. Our customers are in Europe, Middle East and Africa and Asia, our main customers and we have numerous nationwide, regional and local deployments around the world. But it's a great honour for us to be working with the Qatar Ministry of Interior, with Brigadier Ali, and we're very grateful to him and to his very capable team for this opportunity to work together on this very prestigious project. What I'd like to do is focus on the needs of the Ministry of Interior with regard to data particularly with their requirements for a mobile data platform. As you heard from the Brigadier, the approach the Ministry of Interior are taking is very much one of independence from technology. They're working with Tetra, and they want to work with LTE and with other bearers. We've been doing work in the area of GPRS as well. So technology independence. But not just technology independence. A mobile platform a platform that bridges the world of IT and the back office and the world of mobile. That should support any kind of application and be flexible enough to support applications both in the field with mobile users running applications in the field and also applications in the back office and in the control room. So it should be seamless, it should be transparent and it should fulfill people's needs with irrespective of technology and irrespective of application. Importantly, such a platform should be service aware. It should know which bearer to select based on traffic to be passed. The Ministry of Interior want to use Tetra and have been using Tetra in the areas where Tetra excels. For example, for small regular packets of data, for applications like automatic vehicle location tracking, and for time-sensitive messaging, whereas LTE can be used for larger, for larger transfers and larger amounts of data, for example, for real-time streaming video. And importantly, bearer selection should happen automatically. The operator doesn't need to get involved in that. There should be application policies, rules upon which things happen and there should be network policies. Bearer selection should happen such that, for example, when the coverage is patchy or when signal strength drops, it should know what to do automatically without the operator getting involved. It should be seamless. You heard the Brigadier speak about the number of different users, a number of different organizations being supported by the Ministry of Interior. Each of those organizations has their own back office systems. They can be databases, legacy IT systems, intranets, web-based applications. It's critical that connectivity to each of those organizations and to each of their systems is carried out easily. So integration to those back-end systems should be straightforward and easy. We're in a mission-critical environment here, so we need to provide information over the network of choice very quickly, information to the people of need, to the people that need it, when they need it, wherever they are, with a guaranteed quality of service, a guaranteed robustness and resilience. Now let's look at Portalify's initial solution. We've deployed, 
we've deployed a platform at the Ministry of Interior called the Data Management Server, called DMS for short. That is a multi-bearer platform that bridges the IT world and the radio world and provides the network independence to work on different bearers, initially Tetra, GPRS, later LTE, and other bearers. So it bridges these two worlds and provides the connectivity to all the back-end systems. We have the inbuilt connectors based on industry standard systems at the back office. And we can develop the connectors for proprietary systems very easily using a scripting engine which DMS provides. It enables the services and applications to be created very simply. And also, if an organization wants to carry out changes at the back office, much of the time, those changes can be carried out directly within DMS. So that's a very cost-effective way of maintaining back office systems and changes. As well as retrieving information from back office systems, DMS has its own embedded database, so it can store information from different users and from different systems so that information can be subsequently retrieved. So it's not just about providing that information to people on the move in the field. It can be used for subsequent analysis at a later point in time. And importantly, the DMS platform, what it does is it provides accurate receipt, transmission, storage, and management of all forms of information between the field and the control room. If I were to simplify the requirements for information services within the Ministry of Interior but elsewhere as well, I would say you can simplify this problem by saying there are four information formats that we're concerned about. We're concerned about access to location information, access to textual messages, to pictures and to video. If I have that information and those information sources at my disposal, I have a lot of power a lot of opportunity to do, to do a lot of different things. So DMS provides these sources of information both from the field and from the control room and makes information available to another product called the Integrated Applications Console. What that is, is a graphical user interface consisting of a suite of different integrated applications across common applications that we've seen merged together in a very meaningful way that fulfills the operational use cases of different users. And something called secure clients. There are lots of devices out there, and there are lots that we'll, that we'll see coming forward in the future. Those devices range in size, in form factor, in robustness. Secure client supports different mobile operating systems, so you have the opportunity for users to select their devices according to their needs and you can tailor applications according to the needs of each individual food worker, as well as having the same application running on all the devices, depending on what you want to do. You can either have all of them the same or personalize them according to the role of the field worker. What do I mean by integrated applications? Well, we've all seen automatic vehicle location solutions based on GIS mapping. We've seen command and control task management and dispatch applications that use data. We've seen picture messaging applications. You can see them on our stand on B303 just outside here. And we'll see more mo mobile video applications. But what if we were to merge these applications together based on the fact that we have all forms of information, based on the fact we have video over LTE, over the Qatari MOI network, based on the fact we have Tetra, and it's good for certain things. If we were to for example, merge these applications according to the operational use cases of different users, we would have a lot of power, a lot of opportunity to do different things. I'll give an example. You can use LTE for video, take a snapshot of a still frame, a still picture from the video, drag and drop that to an AVL GIS-based mapping application, select the resources, the people that you want to send that still picture to, and instantly it's dispatched over Tetra to the people that critically need it in the field, together with a message, a task. So you're combining mobile video with picture messaging, with AVL, with task management. You can see we're reintegrating everything. And you could have a surveillance application where you click on a button. These sorts of applications that are combined can work on a mobile, small mobile device, for example, within a vehicle. 
You can switch it on and you can carry out discrete surveillance. And that same information can be visible in the control room or you can dispatch information to field users. You see where it's all going. The applications are working together based on the fact that you have all forms of information, both from the field and the back office, available at your disposal. So, I think, moving on to the last slide here on benefits, I think it's clear that the MOI have the means to access all forms of information, whether that information be coming from the field or the control room. This can be achieved very seamlessly. Integration to all required applications, mobile devices and networks ensures that this takes place. We can deliver mission critical information to the point of need, to the people that really need it, when they need it. And because we have access to all forms of information, location, text, pictures and video, and we can present that information to integrated applications that are built according to the operational needs, the use cases of the real users, then what that means is we're empowering field users and control room operators. And not only can we retrieve information from different end users, but we can also share that information amongst different end users. And because we can share it, each user is in a better position to make better decisions. And if they can make better decisions, then that leads to accelerated apprehension and better emergency response management for optimal safety and security within the state of Qatar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for this case study. Here we can see see the power of applications. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, uh, Nick.